We started cover cropping, this will be our third year, going into our third year. So we've got two years behind us. Uh, we found out about cover crops from Billy Sink at Seeds for Bees. We were at a Blue Diamond Growers meeting and he gave a presentation about cover crops. And that was the first time that I'd ever known about cover crops or heard about cover crops. So after that point, uh, I did a lot of research on my own to find out more what cover crop benefits and things to keep in mind for uh, planting the cover crops, any concerns that may come about. So it's been, uh, it seems like longer, but it's been two years and it's been a good two years uh, so far. Basically, there's two methods you can do is a broadcast method where you just have a spreader that shoots it out in the rows. Uh, it's not as neat and clean as having it planted with a um, seed drill. So we don't have a seed drill. So I had to ask around. Uh, I asked my orchard manager if he knew somebody. And so after some phone calls, he was able to find somebody that could plant in our first year with a seed drill, which keeps it in nice rows in a nice and neat looking order. It doesn't shoot out into the berms of the trees. Um, much more efficient method of planting versus spreading, but spreading's okay too. At the end of the day, it seemed like the drill method was better for us in the orchard. So that's specifically what we use. And the planting of it is fairly straightforward uh, with the drill and so the drill method. So uh, pretty simple. I mean, if you, some people have their own drill so they could do it themselves or spreader and in our case we don't so we just hired it out and it was pretty pretty easy to find somebody and have them do it so when you have legumes particularly in your mix you can inoculate the seeds with the beneficial microbes it's just like a powder and you just uh, basically mix it in with your seeds in your in our case a drill that we're using and what that will do is help it the seeds get established in the soil those microbes help uh, and I'm not, uh, can't explain it scientifically, but they've been able to show that when you inoculate the seeds pre-planting, uh, that it'll help get them established and the cover crops established better. Yeah, you don't need to do anything really in particular to get it established. Um, sometimes if you plant it during when it's still really hot and the ground is still really uh, solid, it, it's hard to really get the seeds to penetrate in. And that has happened to us on another orchard that has really compacted soils. But in the end, the crop still grew fine. It just took a little bit longer to establish once we got some rains, but uh, didn't seem to harm it too much or, or prevent it from eventually growing. It's really, once you get your, uh, after the harvest, you get some post harvest work done on the orchard floor. Um, get some of those things done first. Our orchard manager likes to roll over the cover crop uh, once it's been planted so it's flat again, the orchard floor, because as you'll see out in the field, you'll see the, the lines and a lot of orchards, uh, almond growers don't like to have that. So you just roll over it again to flatten it out and before the seed gets established. Don't have to do that, but that's some things that, something that growers may want to do. Um, other concerns with getting established is rain. <laughs> Last year, it wasn't until I think Thanksgiving that we got a significant amount of rainfall to get it established. So it took longer for the cover crop to start growing and, and timing that with the bloom, uh, doesn't always work out that way, but, um, you know, we have micro sprinklers, so it doesn't really cover the whole orchard floor. So that's why we didn't get necessarily a uniform growth across, but it was fine in the end, uh, not a big deal. Um, another concern people have is, can they do their other orchard maintenance like pruning, heavy pruning, uh, December, January, and we do that and it didn't get in the way. The cover crops maybe six inches or so, depending on the growth and the type of crop you have. So. You just drive right over the edges of it in our case and it didn't seem to affect it too much you know if you drive over too much you may lose a little bit on the edges of the you know maybe a foot on each side but 
that's okay. Uh, we have another 10 feet of cover crop that's just fine. So um, those are the main concerns that we had and other growers have up front, but it didn't seem to be any particular problem. I think we are seeing some benefits to the cover crops. Again, we're only two years in, but um, a few that I have seen particularly here on this orchard is we have a sandy loam soil. So during harvest, it gets really dusty. And I've noticed it improving a little bit on that because we have um, the cover crops have established a roots, uh, shallow and deep root system that really has started to get the soil um, less compacted, less dusty. The root structure really helps retain some of the dust and um, and just improve the soil structure so that come harvest, it's not quite as dusty as it was. We're still a little ways away from where I want to be, but uh, I have noticed a difference in the um, lessening of the dust during harvest. Um, another is the beneficial insects that it, it uh, helps bring in and attract, especially around March, April, when the flowering starts to take place or at least be in full bloom of the cover crop. Uh, you just walk through and you see all of these different insects that, you know, are mostly good. And not only that, but the bees, it's uh, after the bees for the pollination are gone, you get the local bees, the native bees that come in and it's just amazing. I mean, you just see all kinds of insects and can contrast that to orchards that don't have any cover crops and it's a whole different environment. It's uh, lifeless almost. So I noticed that as well. And water retention, if you, when we have the cover crops established and once the weather starts to warm up, I like to take a shovel and dig where the cover crop is, um, especially after we haven't had rain in a little while and it's still a moist soil texture and lots of worm activity, earthworm activity, which is a good sign of soil health. And then contrast that with an area that's not covered in the cover crop, just a bare area uh, by the, a uh, little bit further away and it's drier, not much if any earthworm activity. So I can see in that sense how it can really benefit the soil health and life in the soil, which is what we want. We want more life and beneficial microorganisms in the soil and that to me was a good visual that it's it's doing its job and some of these cover crops grow like five six feet high so i was thinking okay how's our tractor going to get through we do quite a bit of foliar spraying during the growing season and so i thought you know i kept asking my orchard manager is that going to be a problem and he said no it's been fine i mean we just drive over it and the, they just pop right back up the flowers and the the plants and it doesn't terminate them driving the tractor, the middle part of it, the tires will roll over it, but the edges, but uh, it has not been an issue. And I was glad to see that because I was concerned that uh, they're gonna get too big and in the way. So on that end, it has not been an issue with being able to drive your tractor over it and get your, or your foliar spraying, orchard maintenance done, not an issue for us. Uh, ways that it helps improve uh, the the orchard or other benefits less weed pressure forgot to mention that that was a pretty big one especially in the middle of where the flowers and the plants are located very few weeds because the cover crop seems to crowd them out so less spraying for weeds that we've had to do which was very good to see uh, but some concerns are will the cover crop take over like a weed and it has not. I mean, especially when you plant it with a drill, it stays right where it needs to be. It doesn't get into the berms by the trees. So that would make it harder to terminate at the end. So um, that was a concern that really didn't come to happen. Uh, and just trying to think, there really hasn't been, it's really low maintenance if to sum it up, uh, it's just low maintenance. You just, once you plant it, just let it grow. 
you don't need to water it and you know just let it rely on rainwater and and then throughout the growing season if for some reason it does get in your way you can terminate it and that's okay or terminate every other row with almonds we like to shake the trees for the mummies around December, January during the wet season and let them uh, go on the orchard floor. Then you mow it to grind them up. But what we're seeing is that you, you don't have to do that. The cover crop apparently will help decompose the mummies itself. So you don't have to mow the cover crop in order to get to the mummies. That's what we're seeing so far. And we're going to continue on with that and see how it goes. But so far, it kind of kills two birds with one stone by not having to mow the mummies because the cover crop will kind of take care of that for you. So we have been terminating by just mowing it, which springtime, we usually terminate April, end of April, early May depending on just if we're getting enough rain throughout April, we'll just keep it going until it starts to, we see it dry out a little bit and then we'll terminate it at that point. So typically April to early May is the latest that we'll terminate. Um, some people like to spray, but I don't think you need to. Uh, that's just an extra, extra expense that you don't need to do. So once you mow it, it terminates and not much grows back maybe here and there you'll see a little bit but it doesn't get in your way so we'll mow it and just let it decompose on the orchard floor what i'm thinking of doing this year is mowing it and having it spread to the berms to act as a mulch and help suppress weeds so i may try that on maybe half the orchard and see how that does and then the other half just let it uh, sit on the middle of the orchard floor and just compare it and see if there's any downside to having it spread to the berms but now a third way is you can mow and rototill it into the soil and let it benefit the soil that way. We have not done that yet. Um, that's something that I'll consider in the future, but we just haven't done that yet. And I've heard people like that, and it's just kind of depends on what you're, what's easier, what, what you want to do, what your goals are with, with the cover crop. So I would say that's a third way of terminating it for people. The Seeds for Bees program takes a lot of the guesswork out, especially if you're new to cover crops like I was. So I didn't know which cover crop mix, what to put in, and Seeds for Bees has pre-mixed uh, varieties for you. So the first year, I planted strictly the mustard mix, which has mustard grass, mixes in with uh, radish, and um, primarily that. And I just did primarily that mix the first year it seemed like what a lot of people go with so I thought and I see that out in orchards a lot so I thought why not try that and um, that's good I mean it's it it takes gets established fairly easy and it seems to bloom just right around the same time as the pollination for our almond trees when those start to bloom it seems to be one of the earlier blooming varieties or mixes that they have so that was nice, uh, easy to terminate, easy to manage, no issues with that. The second year I tried their soil builder mix, which has a little bit more diversity. So it has a lot of legumes, um, has some mustard and some radish and some triticale. So there's um, nitrogen fixing plants in there, which is great because almond growers need nitrogen. So it's another source of free nitrogen for us to our trees to utilize and then the uh, it also has plants that are helpful for the beneficial microbes in the soil like mycorrhizal fungi some of these mixes like the soil builder can help um, get those established and that helps uh, break down the nutrients in the soil for the trees to use so it's just another way of providing extra free fertilizer uh, that the soil builder mix can provide. So I went with that the second year and I'm going again with that the third year this year because I was very happy with the way it turned out. And uh, it's also great for pollinizing. Uh, the, the bees really 
I liked the variety of the flowers that it provided. So it kind of covered all the bases of what I was looking to have here at the orchard, which is um, relieve soil compaction, which is a big problem for us because the soil builder mix has some plant varieties that have deep tap roots that will help break up that soil a little bit more. So that was nice to see. And then also the diversity of flowers, which brought in a lot of beneficial insects and um, uh, help improve water retention in our orchard. So it was a good variety for us. And I think it's again, low maintenance too, which a lot of people will like. Leslie Miller at, out of North Modesta and uh, I've been planting cover crop since uh, 1995. I started out with six foot drills. Uh, three years ago I developed this 12 foot drill. Soil preparation or, or uh, seed bed is probably one of the most important parts and what I tried to do with this machine was do something that I could get most of the orchards and get the seed in good enough. I like to plant that like this post harvest. It's sandy. I can get in it good. Um, there are some orchards that are hard enough that I can't get in, in a plant a seed bed or a good enough seed bed that I can really do a good job. So sometimes I recommend that they work the ground. I mean, some of the stuff is almost like asphalt. <laughs> I mean, it's hard and I can't do it. Now, if I had a a hundred horsepower tractor and a and a drill that weighed twice as much as this and then I need a semi to haul it almost well so I'm trying to stay small enough and nimble enough that I can get around in an orchard without having a lot of high horsepower uh, and uh, I like the maneuverability of the short wheelbase uh, that it it makes it easier because hey if I'm not if I'm not making a groove in the ground and dropping seed, it's it's not working. <laughs> uh, last year, they didn't get enough rain at bloom time, almond bloom time. The stuff was only two or three inches high because they didn't get any rain. Last year, the the way the rain was, the, uh, some cover crops were kind of delayed and getting uh, a, a good start because it was it was dry early on. One year, uh, I don't know, it's been 10 or 15 years ago, I, uh, I had about 200 acres that I'd planted. And I forget now the year, but we didn't get any appreciable rain after harvest until the second week in January. And at 200 acres, I was amazed it all come up <laughs> and uh, come up in good form. Um, th that year in September, I think we had three quarters of an inch during harvest. So somebody that started last year uh, might find, uh, well, they don't know about it. Well, the reason because they, it didn't it didn't germinate and come up well. Well, it, it was it was partly the timing of the rain. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. All cover crop last year didn't seem to to jump, except there was some places where I planted where the, there was farming and they had solid set sprinklers. And they've still got them. And they redone the orchard, and the soil was tight. And uh, they got they had 100% coverage. They had one whale of a cover crop. They, I mean, I, I planted it first part of October, and uh, a week later, the stuff was two and a half, three inches high. It was uh, triticale, the late season stuff. And uh, uh, the the grounds, the soil temperature was still warm, and it had water and it had sunlight and it come up and and just uh, it, it done what they, that's the second year that I've planted there. And uh, it actually is my, used to be my uh, PCA when I was farming and uh, they had water penetration problems. So that's what they, they, they put in to, to help get uh, water to go down quicker. We didn't get any rain, really substantial rain until December. So it was just sitting there and parts of the sprinklers do catch it, but it really is not a significant amount. So we're just at the mercy of nature and whenever it rains, that's when it gets set. So 
it was just sitting here for about a good month and a half. And so that's why there really isn't as much to see here as usual as a typical year. This is our third year of cover crops. So you have some areas that have decent growth, but I would say majority of the orchard looks like what you may see here. And it's maybe, you know, four inches of growth off the ground. What we have here, I planted the whole orchard, the same cover crop mix. So that mix consists of triticale, which I believe is this grass looking um, plant. And then we have some peas right here. And we have some beans and some mustard grass and radish. So uh, let's see, I pulled up a radish here just a minute ago, just to show you kind of what it looks like. It's a little baby radish right now, but by April, hopefully it's gonna be a lot bigger. And what's good about radish is it helps break up soil compaction because it gets nice and big and deep, like a deep taproot. So we have a lot of soil compaction issues here. So that's one of the reasons why I like having radish is that it helps uh, break it up. And um, so, and then mustard grass, I think I mentioned, which you see a few of it flowering here. That's one of the first plants to flower. So there'll be a little bit something for the bees, which we're starting. We just got the bees here at the orchard about a week ago. So there isn't much for them to feed on right now, but uh, maybe towards the middle to end of pollination, we'll have more flowers from the cover crops. We'll see. Once the weather warms up, then it really starts to take off. So even though it doesn't look like much right now, in about a month, it could be a significant amount of growth then, at least that's how last year went. So it's a learning process every year, but it's enjoyable. And I just love to see little changes year to year. For example, what you see after rain are some of these a lot of uh, worm castings. So a lot of worm activity. You see like right here, a lot of this, this is worm castings. So evidence that there's a lot of earthworms coming up and this is provides really good fertilizer for the soil. And a couple years ago, we didn't have nearly as much as we see now. So there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of that this year that I just have not seen before. So little things to notice, but they're, they're good things. It's really low maintenance. And, and so that's been great. We don't have to really think too much about it. It just does its thing and we can drive over it and it is just fine. Thank you.